He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. And now the mystery which remained hidden for ages and generations has been revealed to God's people. Through them, God has chosen to make known how rich and glorious it is. The mystery we speak of is this, Christ in you, the hope of glory.
to bless your name gathered as your family to praise you and proclaim your faithfulness and mercy and we give you glory we give you honor we give you everything we are lifting our hearts and hands before you we give you glory we give you honor we give you everything we are lifting our hearts and hands before you Lord we're here to sing your face to gather in your presence to celebrate your grace you for your blessings and we give you glory we give you honor we give you everything we are lifting our hearts and hands before you we give you glory we give you honor we give you why we're here, to worship, to give glory to God once again. We're a small part of the millions all over the world today who are learning what great things happen when God's people worship Him, when He is given first place, when Jesus' name is lifted up and with hearts and hands we exalt Him above all. We've begun learning how God comes to be with us as our worship welcomes His presence and how He is for us as worship prepares our hearts for the embrace of His peace, bringing security and confidence. And as we gather today to give Him glory once again, let's open our hearts to Him in a new dimension because worship not only welcomes God's presence and peace, it's also a way to welcome His power, to openly, humbly say, come Lord and work in us. It's His desire just as his word declares, Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's astonishing that as we give him glory, in return, he expresses his will and readiness to reveal his glory in us. Together, let's declare it. God in us. Our life is in you, Lord. We invite you to come and open our hearts 
Reveal your life in us today.
For many of us, the idea of God desiring to reveal His glory in us and through us comes as a great surprise. Why? Because we can hardly imagine God doing something wonderful in us. And when He does, we're amazed. Amazed by His gift of strength for our weakness. Amazed by His healing mercy in our sickness. And amazed by His sustaining power in the face of overwhelming loss. Sometimes we get so caught up in trying to unravel the mystery of who we are in Christ that we miss the majesty of who He is in us. What He's done for us had nothing to do with anything we deserved or could earn, but instead it was all His doing, all His grace, all His goodness, all God, God in us. Our testimonies are not an attempt to impress anyone with our faith or achievement. They're given to describe how impressed we are with His. And remembering God's past goodness is a key to overcoming by God's grace today. You're never prepared for this phone call. We were asked to come to the hospital immediately. Our son had been in a terrible auto accident and was in critical condition. Kevin had been speeding down a rain-soaked highway when he went off the road and struck a cement pillar. The impact tumbled the truck into a flood control channel where it landed upside down. Kevin was thrown through the driver's door and landed several feet from the vehicle. A nearby resident heard the crash and ran down to the channel where he found Kevin submerged in a few feet of water. He held our son's head above the water until the police and paramedics arrived. No one at the scene believed Kevin could survive this crash. The doctor told us that he was in a coma and they suspected brain damage due to the impact and the lack of oxygen from being trapped underwater. We were now faced with our worst fears. Through our anxiety and sadness, my husband and I sought God's comfort and healing for our son. Kevin had made many wrong choices in his life and this accident was the result of those choices. We've been praying for so many years that God would give our 38-year-old son a new heart and that he would turn his life over to Christ. The next day, we were told there was evidence of brain damage and that Kevin was not responsive to any stimulation. That evening, our pastors came to pray with us. As our pastor was anointing Kevin with oil, he spoke these words to him, Arise, Kevin, and live. At that moment, I saw Kevin move and gently squeeze the pastor's hand. This was his first movement since the accident. We knew Kevin was experiencing the touch of the Lord, and we also knew in our hearts that our son was going to arise and live. Over the next few months, we continued to seek God's healing touch. Kevin is growing strong and is learning to walk again and is now able to eat. The doctors and nurses have all commented to us that they find it incredible that Kevin survived his injuries and that there appears to be no permanent damage. 
Our son has been touched by God's healing power and the love of God's people. He does not want to go back to the life he was living. He is asked if he can come to live with us until he's physically and financially ready to go on. We're preparing the fatted calf and the robe for Kevin's homecoming. We continue to pray and believe for the greatest miracle of all, the miracle of a new life in Christ for our son. I'm so thankful for the promise and the peace of God in us. by God as a child to step forward and accept Jesus Christ into my heart. This happened in a Sunday evening service when I was about 10 years old. Except for minor, childlike infractions, I didn't really know sin. I did know goodness though, and now I knew Jesus Christ, and I knew He was in my heart. I also remember the temptations that followed. The peer pressure and the need to be accepted was great. Still I reasoned just minor infractions. The fact is, I fell into the rush of doing things that down deep I knew were wrong. Slowly but surely, I began covering up the good of Christ in my heart. By the time I was 12, I was tasting alcohol from a neighbor's liquor cabinet. By the age of 15, I was drinking, smoking, snorting, and ingesting anything I could get my hands on. By 19, I'd experienced nights in jail, car accidents, and attempted suicide. And it didn't stop there. My late 20s brought more trouble, more time in jail, and a divorce. Yet the greatest struggle I faced was the drug and alcohol addiction raging in my body. It makes no sense that I would work so hard for so many years to cover up and hide Christ in my life. But I did. It makes even less sense that a sovereign God would love a person that chose to disgrace Him. But He did, and He does. Looking back over my life, I can see so many times where God miraculously pulled me back from the brink of death. I am by no means unscarred by the choices I have made and the way I live my life, but I am forgiven today. There were no doctors, treatments, or therapy groups that helped me overcome my addictions. My journey was not a matter of discipline, it was a matter of surrender. I surrendered to one of his many wake-up calls. God and God alone graciously healed me. Once I was 100% into intoxicating myself with drugs and alcohol. Now I am 110% intoxicated by God's love and grace and kindness and mercy. That God should choose to bless my life humbles me. I deserve nothing. No, that's not true. I deserve the worst. Instead, He has showered me with the best. He has blessed my life with a loving wife and beautiful children. Experiencing Him in our lives and in our home is the single greatest blessing He has given me. My prayer is that every believer would surrender all to God, and by doing so let every non-believer see His glory in every part of our lives. I pray that by the witness of God in us, they will come to know His Son Jesus as their Savior and their Lord.
When I think of all he's done And I think of his great love Christ died for me Upon that tree With his blood he paid the price Gave his life a sacrifice To rescue me To set me free himself to those who listen to his voice. Throughout the ages, the rich and the poor, the mighty and the lowly, the young and the old, the brave and the frightened have found refuge in the Lord. We are part of that family of faith who have experienced the joy of God with us, the assurance of God for us, and we testify to the mystery and the wonder of God in us. I am a proud king, kneeling as I gladly yield my throne to the King of Kings. I am Moses, talking face to face with God on Mount Sinai. I am a soldier, willing to obey my commander's next order. I am Abraham, offering up my dearest treasure, my own son, on the altar of my own making. I am a fearful child, with my hands raised up, needing my father's comforting embrace. I am clay, silently submitting to the careful molding of the potter's hands. I am a lost lamb, gently carried in the arms of my shepherd. I am Daniel, seeing the angels of the Lord enter the lion's den. I am David, charging out in the name of the Lord to face Goliath in battle. I am Joshua, shouting for all I'm worth as the walls of Jericho come crashing down. I am Isaiah, knocked off my feet by a glimpse of the Father on his throne, and in awe of the epiphanal cry of holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. 
I am one of the Israelites, watching the hand of God hold back the Red Sea. I am a servant, eager to fulfill my master's plans and wishes. I am a patient, putting myself in the hands of the great physician. I am a shepherd, seeing the heavens ablaze with the glory of the heavenly host as they proclaim the birth of the Messiah. I am one of the wise men who followed a star. I open my gifts and bow before a baby who is the King of kings and Lord of lords. I am a blind man who has been touched by Jesus and can now see. I am a leper who has been touched by Jesus and is now clean. I am a lame man who has been touched by Jesus and can now walk. I am a guilty woman who is so happy to be forgiven that I spend my life savings to buy Jesus some oil that I pour on his feet. I am a little boy handing Jesus my lunch and watching him feed thousands with it. I am a girl once demon-possessed who was touched by Jesus and is now free. I am a thieving criminal dying on a cross who has just been offered a place in paradise. I am Mary Magdalene, who was at the tomb when an angel said, He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. I am John, the beloved apostle, looking through the universe to find someone worthy of opening the scroll and weeping because none is worthy. I am John, hearing the angels tell me not to worry because the lion has triumphed. He is able. Yes, the Lion of Judah is worthy. I crane my neck, hoping for a glimpse of him, and I'm shocked that what I see is not a lion, but a lamb. A lamb that had been slain for the sins of the world. For my sin. Then I heard 10,000 times 10,000 angels. In a loud voice they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea. And they were singing to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever and ever.
my soul cease from the labor and the toil refreshing springs of The troubled minds and hearts that ache Be still, my soul God knows your way And He Yeah.
we have sung our praise, worshiped God, testified to His goodness, opened our hearts in humility, and quieted our souls. And in His presence, we have bowed in amazement, not only at the glory of God Himself, but in wonder that He wants to reveal His glory in us. He wants to pour Himself into your need, your weakness, your home and your family, your church, and to fill it all with His glory.
us lift our voice and sing songs of glory songs of honor songs of praises unto our He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy.